בקדוש בוקר אור, מסכת בבא קמא דף מ"א עמוד א' 41a1. says the Mishnah, השור שנגח את האדם ומת, השור that comes and gores a human being and he dies. If the short is a muad, משלם כופר, he has to pay כופר. Remember the כופר was because he killed the human being. So he has to pay, right, for the כופר. Tam, if it's going to be a tam, פטור מן הכופר. It's going to be פטור from the כופר. וזה וזה, but it doesn't matter whether it's a tam, that means one more time. The difference between a tam and muad was, does he pay כופר or not? But, וזה וזה, it doesn't matter whether it's going to be הלא זה, right? It doesn't matter whether it's going to be a tam or a muad, חייבים מיטה, we kill. The animal with skila. The same halacha would apply whether we're talking about a short is memita katan or katana. Whether it's, a, you know, we're not talking, it doesn't matter whether it's, you know, not an adult or no, even a boy or a girl, right? Nagach eved o ama, but if it comes and it gores, an eved kenani or shivcha kenanit, noten shloshim slaim. So you only have to give 30 slaim to the master. Okay, ben shu yafe, right? Maya mana, whether the eved is worth 100 mana. Right? Or whether it's going to be, which is a thousand dinarim, right? Or he says, uh, sorry, 10,000 uh, 10, dinarim, or it's only going to be worth one dinar. That means basically what we're trying to say is, is that this is like Kilu, the kofir of the Eved or Shivcha, and therefore I don't really care whether this could be an Eved, which is like, a, a, I don't know what, a, a, you know, the, one of these big uh, Yugo, I don't know, huge guys, or a sl- skinny little tiny, I don't know what. Doesn't matter, it's the same price for an Evid. Okay? Fine. Says the Gemara. Hechi me'achar demitam katlina le' mu'ad hechi meshkachala. Says the Gemara, one second. If I'm going to kill a shor, if it's a tam, if it kills a human being, so then how could you find a mu'ad then? So I'm a rabba, rabba comes and he says, right? And he says, was the mu'ad came and killed. So one second, how, how did that happen? So says the Gemara, I'm a rabba, rabba says, I'm a rabba, Right? The covenant of the shore was is that he wanted to come and kill right? three different people. Right? And every single time the guy ran away. But the dean went and it said that if they wouldn't have run away, the shore would have killed them. So therefore, the Maase, he didn't actually kill them. So therefore, he's not going to be uh, he's not going to be stoned. Nevertheless, he becomes Mu'ad to kill human beings. Everyone understood the Chidush, something incredible. Here we're talking about the Zechidush of a shor running after a human being to kill him. He didn't actually kill him because the guy ran away. The fact that the guy ran away, so mina shamayim, chazak uvaru, kol akavod. But, right, but what happens though, though now is, is that the fact, right, the fact though that he wanted to kill human beings, he was going to be testified upon three times, and now he becomes mu'ad to kill and therefore, when he actually kills, he's called a muad. It's a muad to kill. Okay, that's the first answer of Rabbah. Rav Ashi Amar, Rav Ashi says, no. Umdena, love krumu. And umdena is nothing. What do I care that he wanted to kill? What does that mean? Ela, chameskin, what are we dealing with? Kigon siken lishlosha bnei adam. He came and he gored three people and he put their lives in danger. Meaning he gored them and he almost killed them. But they all survived. And therefore, it was only after the three times, and now after the three times, he's actually, how do you call this? You know, like, uh, he actually does kill, so he's considered a muad. Okay? Now, the next part of the Gemara, right, says that, that was the answer of Ravashi. So, one more time. Answer of Rabba, right, he actually came, and they he wanted to kill three people. Each time, they escaped completely. But the way that he was going, going to gore them, they came, they testified, boom, one, two, three. He's a muad to kill. If he actually kills, he's called a muad. Second answer, this is Ravashi. What's an umdana? Umdana that he wanted to. Oh, he wanted to. Oh, a lot of people want to do a lot of things. What does that mean? Mm-hmm. No. The Kamanais, he did actually gore them. But he put them in their lives in danger. That They almost died. Right? But when he actually wanted to come and put their, in, their lives in danger, that they almost died. Right? But what happens now is, is that all of a sudden, they all survived. So he became a muad though. So if he's a muad to actually de- to go to kill, because he actually almost did kill them. In a shamayim, they all got saved. Oh, right? Why don't we kill him before he kills the fourth, the fourth yeah, person? You, unless he kills, you cannot kill. That's the, that's the law. The yeah? Zvid Amar. Yeah. Zvid comes and he says, Kegon she'arag shlosha behemot. He went and he already did kill. But he killed three animals. So by killing three animals, he becomes a muad for killing. Right? But, okay, but, 
even though he becomes, a, well, we don't kill the animal because he only killed the animal when he kills a human being, not when he kills an animal. So therefore, he's a muad. And then we can, so that's the answer of Razvid. So ask the Gemara, this is not a good answer. You know why? Umuad la beema, have muad la adam. It says what? Do you think muad for a beema becomes muad la adam? It's a different species. You remember we spoke about that if it's a muad for, for growing animals, that doesn't mean he's a muad for killing a human being. So therefore, okay, he's a muad. But it was muad for beema, it's not for human beings. And therefore, it's not going to be a muad then. So fine, and I'm Ravashi, but Rav Shimi, but Rav Shimi comes and he gets another answer. So one more time, we had the answer of Raba, right? And we evaluated it, Ki'ilu, he wanted to kill the human beings, but he didn't actually gore, right? The second answer of Ashi, he did gore and he put their lives in danger. I mean, a Shemaim, they survived, but he did it three times and therefore it's, he's a one for, for killing. Rav Zvid's answer was, he's a one for animals. Well, he said that's not true because one for animals, one for human beings. So we pushed off that answer and we give another answer now. He killed three goyim. And therefore, since he killed three goyim, right, he's not killed, right? But he's a muad for killing for killing people. He's a muad for, for human beings. So ask the Gemara, are you going to tell me muad for a goy is considered muad for Israel? We don't do that. Rabbi Shimon Melakish, brother Rabbi Shimon Melakish says, he killed three people that are trefot. Three Jews, but they're Trefot, which means, right, which means that's why he was in Chayav Skila. He became a Muad because he actually killed three people. But you don't kill him because he killed people that anyway are going to die. Terminally ill. People that are going to die within the year. So for people that are already a Trefa, he doesn't get killed for it. Because anyway, the guy was going to die. So he killed a Trefa. But he becomes a Muad. So that's the case of the Gemara. Okay? So says the Gemara, this is what a muad for a trefa is that considered muad for somebody that's whole? Obviously not. So the of Papa, but rather of Papa says, you're right. The katal varag lagma, he killed, but he ran away. The katal varag lagma, then he, he killed again, and he ran away. Which means that since the reason why we didn't stone him was, is was he he killed and he took off, killed, took off, killed, took, we we couldn't find the guy. We couldn't find the guy. The shore, we couldn't find it. But every time we always knew it's this shore. We already had a siman. This is the shore that kept on killing. But after we killing, he used to run away. We couldn't find it, so we couldn't kill it. But since he already did it three times, it's considered a muad. So finally, when you actually come and you actually catch him, right, it's going to be problematic. Okay? Rav Acha, Bered Ravi Kamar. So now we're going to have to answer another answer. Okay? Rav Acha, Bered Ravi Kamar. Kegon shu zmu zomeme zomemin. Right? What does that mean? The edim shizimu, the shalosh negichot, they at Smam were his mu. And therefore, right, since we weren't sure about the testimony, he was never stoned. One more time, in order to stone an animal, what do you need? Yeah? David, what do you need? Stones. To stone an animal. How do, what do you need? Stones. Other than stones, obviously. <laughs> what do you need? Witnesses that what? That to testify gored. that he gored and he killed. Not only he gored, he killed. Because if he didn't, if he only gored, that's nothing. He gored and he killed. What happens if the two witnesses come? This animal gored and killed, and uh, two other witnesses, so right? Weird. They come and they made them zombie. So, so now you can't you can't kill the animal. You can't kill the animal. Why? Because if they made a zombie. Second group of witnesses killed Ben Adam Shani. They, they made them zombie. Third group of witnesses come, they killed the, made them zombie. What happens now? There were three times where he actually gored and killed. But the Edim were all made into zombie. All of a sudden, I come and I say, you have another two witnesses that come and they say, right? Boom. They made them into, um, edim, they made the Edim Zom, like they made the ones which were Mazimim, they made them into Edim Zom. Now it comes out that all three groups were actually correct. So it comes out if all three groups that testified about man number one, man number two, man number three were correct, this animal is a Muad. So that's the case. And if, and if they are right to make the, the first ones Zom, I mean, if, if the second group, it's going to be good that you have to make the shore into a muad, right? With three different cases, shapir, then it makes sense. But if you're going to say that it's going to be on three different days, meaning like this, I understand if you're going to say that there's going to be three negichot that have to be on three separate days to become a muad, so then it makes sense. But if you're going to tell me that you have three different days, but to do the shor muad, you just need to tell him three different days, right? That his shore was nagach in order to be careful, 
and basically we're going on the the Benadam and not on the shore, meaning what does it help me now, this entire concept about the shore? I don't care about the shore. I'm going to come and I'm going to say, your shore gore. I come to you and I say, your gore short and killed. I come to you and say, your shore gore and killed. Your shore, and it's going to be on the human being. It's not going to be on the shore. So, Neymar Amale, so he could say, lo Yadana. Yeah? Okay. So he says, I don't know why we're talking about that. So answers the Gemara, the Amri, we're talking about Kol Imat Kigon, the Amri, Kol Imat the Katin Tore Gabe, Havikai. Every single time that the shore killed, right, the owners were there. And since the owners were there, that's why it's going to be a different halacha. Okay? Ravina Amar. Ravina comes and he says, Yeah, be makirin et balashor, be makirin et shor. No, you only knew the owner and you don't know which, which ox. Meaning you know that it's one of his ox, but you don't know the owner. Uh, sorry, you know the owner, but you just don't know which ox. So my what should he have done? Shum the Amri levels, they tell him, Torah Nagana Yit Nikhab Krach, Bala Khalan Turu Kul Bakrach. They could come and tell him, listen, one of your shores is a gore, but I don't know which one. So watch all of them. Watch all of them. Right? I don't know which one. I, I can't tell you which one. But I know there's one of them. So just watch all of them. Fine. Next. Vizeh Vizeh. Yeah, Alaze Alaze. Yeah, he comes and he says, Yeah, he says, Vizeh Vizeh Chayavin Mita. Both of them are going to be Chayav Mita. Tarun Rabbana, we don't have to write that. We must from the fact that it's written. Sakoli Sakela Shor. That you're going to come and you're going to damage the shore, you're going to, not damage, you're going to stone the shore. Any I don't know that it's a nevela. So what does it mean? You're not allowed to eat the flesh. Obviously, if you just stone the shore and you killed it, obviously it's a nevela. So you can't eat it. Right? So what does it mean? So what does it mean now? What does it mean What does it mean now? What does it mean You're not allowed to eat it. But that's only if it's going to be ba'achila. But how do you know you can't sell it? What does that mean? He came out clean from his properties. When you say somebody comes, he comes out clean from his properties. He doesn't have anything. He's completely clean from his properties. He has no anaa from the properties. Okay? So says the Gemara, how do you know that when it says it means that we're talking about that you did shechita after the gemar din, right? And therefore you're saying that it's a sur ba'achila. Maybe it's you did shechita after the gemar din, and this lo yachel besaro means if you actually did skila, that it's a sur ba'ana'a. Meaning one more time, right? You guys are with me. There's something which is called isur ana'a and isur achila. To tell me that it's a isura khila after stoning the animal, pashut. Why? There's no shkita done to it. It's obviously a isura khila. So we said, no, you're right. It's really Bemet coming to teach you that you did shkita after the gemardin, but before it was stoned. This, since you did the shkita, you're not allowed to come and you're not allowed to eat it, right? And you're not allowed to benefit from it as well because it says, naki bin echisa v'chule v'chule. Right? Ubala shor naki. Ask the gemara, maybe Bemet it's talking about, right? That you you actually did shita after the gmardin, and you're not allowed to eat it. Not benefit from it, you're not allowed to eat it. He says, really, Mehmet, you're talking about shita after gmardin, and it's permitted to eat. And really, Mehmet, it's a surba na'ah, not a surba khila. Selling ana? Selling is ana. Yeah, you get money. Money is ana. Yeah, eating is eating, and selling is ana. So he says, kidribiavu, like kabiavu. Right? What does that mean? Any single time it says the word lotochal, achila could either mean achila or hanaa until the pasuk explains to you. Meaning, I don't know, sometimes it could be achila, sometimes it could be ana. Right? Because, for example, it says, Lo kun you're allowed to eat a nevela. But, you're allowed to sell it. So, therefore, from there, you see that Lo tochlu means mamash, that it's a sur to eat, but it's mutar and benefiting. So, you could actually go and you could actually sell it. So, a nevela, you're allowed to sell a nevela. You went and you did shechita, and the shechita didn't come out properly. You could sell it. You sell it to a goy. 
Okay, there's no problem. So Amri. So they said, Hanimili, one of these words. Only if they come out, the Yisur of Anan and Achila is from the Pasuk of Lo Yochal. Aval Hacha, but over here, that the Yisur Achila comes from Yisakol Yisakel, meaning the fact that it's already done Skila, you're not allowed to eat it. So Yisakol, if you're going to tell me now that Lo Yochel Besoro means Yisur Na'a, so the, the Torah should have written Lo Yane. Inami Lo Yochel Besaro Lamali. So what do I need then? Lo Yochel Besaro. Right? He comes and he says, so why do I need then Lo Yochel Besaro? Because even though you did like a regular shechita, which means technically it should be kosher, asur, you're not allowed to eat it or have hana'a from it. Okay? So it says the Gemara, Matkif, la marzuta, marzuta, kabbali, the answer following question, why don't I just say that this words, that a shor is going to be asur, even if it was done shechita, is davka, memalaf abubet, 41b, is davka hechad badak tzor, if you checked, Right with an even chada, b'shachadbo, and you came, you did shkita with it. The avde ken skila that you did like skila, which means you took an even. Sor, right? She took it a stone, so the stone was like the knife. It was a sharp one, and therefore you did like skila. Avalechad b'shachte b'saki no, but maybe if you did shkita, maybe man it's not going to be asur. Meaning, I would have thought to say that what happens if I did shkita, but I did it with a stone. So now you could say, listen, I gave it skila. How did I give it skila? I took a stone and I, I used the stone. But technically speaking, I did shita. So he comes and he says, he comes and he says, maybe there it's going to be a suit. But if I use a bameta sakin and everything, maybe bameta it's going to be mutar. So Amri, they said, atu sakin is it written anywhere that you have to do shita with a sakin? Where's it written? Even if you're going to come and you're going to do shita with other things, it's also going to be kosher. There's no problem. Okay? And now it's going to come out. Isur achila v'isur nami lo yachel besaro. From isur achila and isur anaa from lo yachel besaro. So then, why do I need them balashor naki? At the beginning, we thought balashor naki comes to teach you that the balashor is clean from its properties, meaning you're not allowed to benefit from it. But if you're already learning the isur of hanaa from lo yachel besaro, right? So therefore, why do I need balashor naki then? That he doesn't benefit from it. Why do I need that? So answer the Gemara. Lanat oro. We're talking about the hana'a of its skin. Right? The Sagadat means, I would have thought to say, Bissarohu, Tasur Banav, Al Oroni I would have thought to say, listen, you can't benefit from the animal. But the skin of the animal, you could benefit from. Right? Kamashmala, Nubala Shonaki, you're not allowed to benefit even from the skins of the animal. Meaning the skins of the animal is a little bit different than the flesh. I would have said, listen, you can't benefit from the, you can't eat it, Kamuvan. You can benefit from selling the flesh, okay? But the skinning, you would have said, "Listen, the skin is not the exact same as animal." So for maybe it's different. You would be permitted to to sell it. Kamashmala, not even the skin, not in the skin of the animal. So says the Gemara: "Ul hanach tana demapke le lehai ubal ashur naki ledrash acharina." But according to the Mandamar that he comes and he says when it says "bal ashur naki," it comes to teach you another drasha. Because we learn the kameim and the kaman that we learn say later on. Hanat oro menalu. So how do you know about Hanat oro? So he says, Nafka lehu mi besaro. When it says et besaro, et is a tafela besaro. What is, what is tafela besar? My nihu oro. Yes, it's tafel to the basar. The basar is a majority. The skin is the minority. So when it says et, the extra et comes to include that you're not allowed not only to benefit from the flesh, which is besaro, but gum can Mioro from the skins as well. So says the Gemara, the high Tana et lo dadish, but the other Tana, he doesn't learn that. Why? Because the Tanya is willing to write that Shimon Amsoni, we've seen this many times already in Kiddushin and other places as well. Shimon Amsoni, the Chemia Amsoni, they used to make all the ets, all the ets in the Torah, they used to make their short. Kevin Shigia, once he got to it, Hashem no Kechatira, Piresh, he separated. Right? Why? Amrulo Tavina, the Tamidim told him, Rebbe. All the atin, uh, the atin shedrasha matealen, which means if you think about it, where is it? Hashem lo kechatira, dvarim, right? Meaning that you went through the entire Torah until sefer dvarim, and you are being doresh all the etz, and it was actually working. So what's going to happen on all those dirashot? So he comes and he says, all those dirashot didn't go in waste. It's one hundred percent fine. 
I had no problem. So he says, but he separated. He says, Amalem, he told him, just like I got schar, reward on all the dirashot that I did until now, I'm going to get a schar, the reward on that I separated. Because remember, for us in Torah, there's a big difference in Torah and anything else. Imagine right now, David, you come and you're starting to make work on a deal. And after working on the deal for a week, you didn't succeed. Do you get money? No. Mm-hmm. Why? You didn't cut the deal. Right? By Torah, if you come and you were working on a pshat, and you were working on it an entire week, and then it was wrong, you still get schar. Anu ratzim ve'em ratzim. Anu ratzim Anu amelim ve'em amelim. Hem amelim ve'en amekablim schar. Anu amelim umkablim schar. What does that mean, anu amelim ve'en amelim schar? That even we were wrong, we still get reward. It's a big difference. So therefore, he comes and he says, I'm, I got reward on all the dirashot, even though they're all wrong. I still get reward for them. And I'm going to get a reward for the, the, the Prisha as well. Ad shebar Rabbi Akiva. Until Rabbi Akiva came. And he said, Et Hashem elokecha tira lerabot amidecha chamim. The kam senkut amidecha chamim. Only Rabbi Akiva that he had the chokhmah. Right? And he had the hatred for tamidecha chamim when he was in Amaharit. He was able to say that when it says Et Hashem elokecha tira, you have to fear God. The et kam senkut that you have to fear tamidecha chamim. Yeah? That means mamash. Because Shimon and Sonia and Yechamim, they were saying, who's on the same level as uh, Kadosh Baruch Hu at Hashem Lekei Chatira? What are you going to include? Comes to me, Akiva, you have to include that Tamil Chacham, fearing a Tamil Chacham, is like fearing a Kadosh Baruch Hu. A lot of people, they don't put that into practice. Yeah, they think, ah, uh, big deal. You know, they do whatever they want. You understand? Especially if you're Moroccan. Everyone's very nice. Yeah, but uh, what's the you understand? But what happens is, right, that's the concept. Fine. Tanu Rabbanan. We learned in Abraita. What does it mean Balashon Naki? Rabbi Yezir Omer Rabbi Yezir says, Naki mechetzi kofer. When it says Balashon Naki, it means that if it's a short tam, he's going to be clean from even the chetzi kofer. Meaning he's going to pay nothing. Amalo Rabbi Kiva, Rabbi Kiva says, Valo what's one mishalem before, the tam is only going to pay from its body. Have you all the bedin mishalem lecha? He says, bring him to the bedin, then he's going to have to pay. What does that mean? The Torah doesn't have to teach you this. We know this already. So Amalo Rabbi Yezir, Rabbi Yezir says, Kacha ni benecha. This is what, this is what I am in the, Shedini Beze Shechayav Mita that we're talking about, we're, we're not talking about now case where there's going to be Chayav Mita. En Dini Ela Keshemit Eta Adam Al Pied Echad. He killed a human being, but he only killed a human being with one head. Right? Or Al Pied Baalim, or the Baalim themselves come and they said it. So for in such a case, right, that's what it says over here, in such a case, um, it's not enough to kill the Shor, but it's enough to be Mechayev Kofir. That means here it's something incredible. Usually when a shore kills a human being, we right, we have to kill the shore. Here, there was only one witness. Or the Ba'alim themselves were the ones that admitted. They came and they said, My, his shore came and it, and it killed. So therefore, since it was done in such a fashion, they can't kill the shore. But they could still be Mechaev Kofi. They can't kill the shore, but they could be Mechaev Kofi. So says the Gemara, one second, but if it's a Ba'alim, al pi Ba'alim, Modebiknas Patur. It's Modebiknas. We learned this yesterday, you remember? We said, if you come and you admit to a sin, that you committed, you're going to be exempt. So the answer is the Gemara, right, Kufra Kapara. Obviously, he holds a Kuf Kofir is a Kapara. And ever since it's a Kapara, it's not a Knas, it's not Mamona, it's Kapara. He still needs an atonement. What do I care now that he's going to admit on his own accord? He still needs an atonement. So give him an atonement. It's a Kapara. Tanya Yidah, we learned in another Braita. Amalo Rabbi Eliezer says, Rabbi Eliezer, Akiva. Cold, cold, this is what I'm so light in your eyes. Really, he wanted to kill an animal. The animal ditched, and Bidiuk, when the animal moved, he killed the human being. Or to Amitsri, he wanted to kill a goy, and he killed a Jew. A Nefel, and he killed the Ben Kayama. So, in all these cases, right, we don't, we don't kill the shore, right? Why? Because basically, since he didn't have Kavanah to kill a human being or to kill the one that he was supposed to kill, so therefore, it's going to be exempt. So it comes out that you could collect the gufo chetzi kofen, but we don't kill the animal. So it says the Gemara, Hamer Liberesha, which Shuvah of Rabbi Yezer to the Kiva was said in the beginning? This last one, the one which was, sorry, the first Braita, which we could ask the question that we asked before, or maybe it's the second Braita, which is a better one. So Rav Kahana Mishmed, the Rav Amar, Mit Kaven Amar Liberesha. He first told them the answer Mit Kaven, right? And therefore, he first told them the better answer. And after you and Mishmael Rabbah, no, Hemit Amalabirisha, the first one that he actually did kill, but it was only one witness or 
בבעלים. רב כהנא משמד רב אמר, מתכוון אמר לבני שי, ידעו תלמוד מתכוון, right? and he said משל לצייד ששולט דגים מן הים. he said it's a משל to a צייד, to a fisherman, that he comes and he was taking the fish from the sea. right? so מש כך רב רב שקיל, right? זו תרי שקיל, so when he found the big fish, he took them, the small ones, right? he also took them. So therefore, even though Rabbi Yezir is talking about, right, that we're talking about Kilu that, uh, you know, he was Chazar and he said another case, he said it as well. Meaning, sometimes it happens that you take a big fish, but then afterwards you find a small fish and you still take it. So he gave him the better answer, and then he went and he gave him the worse answer, but even though it's a little bit worse, it's a small fish. So he took it as well. Okay? But of Tovyume, Nishmed Rav Amar, of Tovyume, in the name of Rav Amar, he says, Amar emit amal b'reshe. He first told him the first answer, which is that of the killing, and he gave the mashal. It's a yesh shulat agin ayam mishkach zuter shakir. He took the small one, but when he took the big, when he found the big fish, shad zuter v'shakir. He threw out the the small one and he took the big one. That's just a mashal, meaning that when you got the better answer, you got rid of the small answer, the bad answer, and you kept the big answer. Okay.